guys, it's here. It actually came two to three weeks earlier than expected. Props to Apple for getting this out. But before I get into the unboxing process, picking up where I left off in my previous video of ordering it at apple.com, saving a whole lot of money in the process. Check out the two videos I did on that if you're interested in also saving money at Apple. So afterwards, I got an email confirmation of the order and an estimated delivery date of late July to early August. I placed this order late June. So you can imagine to my surprise when I woke up one morning to a text message saying that my order had shipped. And then I checked my email and lo and behold, there was that $150 Apple gift card promised because of the back to school deal. Checking the tracking number, which is shipping by FedEx, the estimate was a week from the ship date. So you can imagine to my second surprise that this actually arrived in two days shipping from China. So this was a really fast turnaround. Though a brief word of caution, it looks like Apple has done away with the signature confirmation. So they just dropped it off at my front door. So if you are in an area where your packages may get stolen, you definitely want to be really on top of the tracking or at least have them hold it at one of the FedEx facilities. Also on the delivery day, I received an email to schedule a free 30 minute online consultation with an Apple specialist, which would be nice if this is your first time setting up a Mac. But I personally didn't need it, so let's go ahead and get right into this unboxing. So this is the brown box that it comes with. You can see the battery hazard uh, warning on the exterior. It's a very compact box. The box for the MacBook Pro is really not that much smaller than this. On the side, they do list the serial number of the MacBook and the model number as well. And with classic Apple packaging, this box can be completely unboxed without any sharp knives or tools. Opening up the cardboard flaps like a book, there it is, the MacBook Pro in its box. And I just want to take a few seconds to acknowledge how well engineered this box design is. It's so compact, yet it provides enough padding for the MacBook Pro so it wouldn't be damaged in transit. So with the shrink wrap removed, here's a quick look at the box. I did get the 14 inch model so you can see the colors are more on the red side. If you get the 16 inch model, it's more on the blue side. So it's a nice clear display on the front and then on the sides, the short sides, it has the Apple logo in black and then the long sides, it has MacBook Pro written also in black. Turning around to the back, it has the label with my particular custom configuration. So you can see again, I have the 14 inch MacBook Pro with the base specs of eight core CPU, 14 core GPU, 16 gigabytes of RAM or unified storage. And the only thing I upgraded was that SSD to two terabytes. Opening up the box, the first thing you see is the MacBook Pro itself. We'll put that to the side for now, save the best for last, take a look at what's underneath. Starting with the paperwork in the envelope, as usual it says designed by Apple in California. It is assembled in China, but the design is by the engineers in California. First up is a quick start guide, which is really just labeling the different aspects or ports and features of the MacBook. Next is a sheet of all the compliances, basically mandatory regulation disclosures. And last but not least, Apple stickers. And these are in the color black to indicate that this is a true pro level machine. And that's all the paperwork you get with this machine. I had to do a double take on this cardstock because it's so thick, but that's it. Moving on to the charger. It is now a braided MagSafe cable that is detached from the USB Type-C 67 watt charger. Because I got the base specs, I was given the base uh, power adapter. If you chose the base specs, you can opt to pay a $20 premium to get the 96 watt version. Or if you have a higher spec GPU or CPU, you will automatically get the higher watt charger. The power brick is a familiar white glossy Apple charger with a matte Apple logo in the middle. You can see the USB charger. It only has one USB port, however, no Ethernet port or anything else. It still features prongs that are able to fold out and also are completely 
removable as a module so you can easily switch out to a different type if you were traveling internationally or if you wanted to attach an extension cable which funny enough I tried out my old extension cord that came with my 2012 MacBook Pro and that fit perfectly. The USB-C to MagSafe 3 cable was quite a task to unravel without damaging the packaging. I like to keep my packaging as pristine as possible. But anyways, finally we see there is the MagSafe 3. Very thin and lightweight. It's reversible. Same thing with the USB Type-C on the other end. Another new welcome addition is the braided cable. Previous Apple cables had that infamous soft touch enclosure that not only got dirty and disgusting looking real quick, but it also was prone to get ripped or teared. Alright, so with the accessories out of the way, let's take a look at the star of the show. Wrapped in this wax paper is the MacBook Pro with the Apple logos encircled if you can tell right there. It seems Apple is committing to a more sustainable packaging by using paper as opposed to plastic. And this is a very easy pull away to reveal my Space Gray MacBook Pro 14 inch 2021. And oh my gosh, I'm so glad I picked the space gray color. I was definitely flipping back and forth between this one and the silver one. But since I never owned a space gray MacBook before, I decided to just pick something new. And I think this looks really slick on the exterior. Coming from a mid-2012 MacBook Pro, it's a very familiar design, very boxy. It seems thick, but honestly, it feels a lot lighter than my 2012 13 inch because it is 3.5 pounds heavy and only 0.61 inches thick. On the top, it has a black glossy Apple logo. On the front, there's an easy divot to open up the lid, which I'll do in just a second. But taking a look at all these ports, look at all those ports. We've got the MagSafe 3.0 charging port, the two USB-C Thunderbolt 4 ports, and the headphone jack that supports high impedance headphones. Moving on to the right side, a full SD card slot is back alongside a third Thunderbolt 4 port and a full-size HDMI port. On the back, you can see the fully metal hinge as well as some openings for ventilation. Some more vents can be found on either side of the bottom edges of the MacBook 2. And finally, on the bottom, you have the redesigned, more flat rubber feet. Which I'm curious to see if it'll last longer than my previous MacBook Pro's feet, which I've had to re-glue back on every single one of them. But back to the 14 inch MacBook Pro, you can see the name MacBook Pro is embossed into the bottom plating of the MacBook Pro. And the screws now holding the bottom plate in are no longer the standard Phillips screws, but rather the pentalope screws making it a little bit less accessible. The final thing left to do is to turn this baby on. And there's the gorgeous new MacBook Pro 14. It has a mini LED display with a notch which is a little bit hard to see right now. But it houses a new 1080p HD webcam, finally Apple. And they did away with the touch bar, which I personally never use coming from a 2012 MacBook Pro. Upper right corner has the fingerprint reader, the Touch ID, which also doubles as a power button. And you get a full set of function keys alongside the other keys, which are all backlit and inset in a black background. Flanking either side of the keyboard are speaker grills which produce really impressive sound. Thus far I've really enjoyed listening to them. And the icing on the cake is this enormous force touch trackpad. No moving parts here but the haptic engines make you feel like you're actually clicking it which is really quite impressive. That's a wrap on this unboxing video but definitely stay tuned to my channel for more coverage on this particular machine as well as a comparison with my old machine the 2012 MacBook Pro. Subscribe for higher quality content now coming from a much more powerful machine.